Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on floating point literals. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website here, www.javacjava.com, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the begin button. This takes you to the Java tutorials page. Scroll down here to floating point literals. Floating point literals are simply a whole number followed by a decimal point followed by more numbers that represent a fraction of the next whole number on the number line. Floating point literals can be either positive or negative. Floating point literals can be assigned to variables of the following primitive data types, double and float. Floating point literal structure is like this. You have your number, then you have your decimal point, then you have a fraction of the next number on the number line. So I've got a simple little number line drawn out here showing you 2.5 is in, in between 2 and 3 uh, with the point 5 representing halfway a fraction of the that. Negative 5.25 is, is in between negative 5 and the next, whole, and the next number on the number line, negative 6 there. Okay, uh, Pretty simple. The double data type takes up 64 bits of memory. The float data type takes up 32 bits of memory. Now by default, floating point literals are 64-bit doubles. When assigning a floating point literal to a variable of the primitive data type float, you must include an uppercase F or a lowercase f postfix letter. Uh, when assigning a floating point literal to a variable of the primitive data type double, you can include an optional uppercase D or a lowercase D postfix letter. Okay, here's some representations here. We've got a primitive data type uh, double, our variable A, and we are assigning it to the floating point literal 1234.75. 1234.75. Now, no postfix D is required. Floating point literals are double by default. Okay? Uh, here I've got another floating point literal. I've uh, just stuck in some underscores. That's an optional thing to make some stuff more readable or whatnot, too. Um, and on this particular floating point literal, I have included the optional D suffix there. Suffix, postfix can be used interchangeable. They mean basically the same thing there. And so now we have a float data type, the variable name E, and we're going to assign that 1234.76, and then you have to include this up, F. That F can be uppercase or lowercase. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, come down here and highlight this. Hit Control C to copy or right click on it and select copy. And let's go ahead and do some, make some stuff happen here. <clears throat> Pull that off screen. Let's go to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start and run, type in CMD. Type in Java C and then press enter. And if you don't see all this stuff scroll by, right, and you get an error message instead, go ahead and look at my installing the Java Development Kit tutorial to make sure that you get that all installed right. You'll definitely need to do that. Type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. And backslash tells it to go ahead and go all the way down to the root. Type in MD, which is short for make directory Java. I already have it. If you don't, it'll go ahead and create it. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. We're going to make a directory and we're going to call this uh, floating point literals. <clears throat> it's a long one. CD, F, and then I'll hit tab on the keyboard to fill all that in. And we'll type in notepad floating point literals.java. Floating point literals.java is going to be our source code file name. Always must end in the .java extension. Let's go ahead and hit enter on that. Hit control V to paste or right click cop and select paste. Oops, don't want to do it twice though. Okay, um, let's go ahead and save this. Pretty simple. I'm just doing those same declarations up here. I just put those in there. And now I included a int type um, data type. Variable name identifier here is X, and we're assigning it the value of 10. And then we've got a double um, data type. The Y variable name or identifier is uh, 0.27. And then we're going to have an int I result and an 
a double D result. All right, pretty straightforward on that. We're going to go ahead and multiply x times y, which is 10 times 0.27. Now 10 times 0.27, as we do the simple math, is 2.7 is the answer on that, right? And the D result down here, we don't have to do anything to it because um, doubles can already hold that, that decimal point value. Now what we have to do up here for an int, obviously an int can't hold that 0.7 value. So what, what's going to be our result? That's a very good, good question. But we do have, in order to make the compiler not go off on an error, we have to include this int in these parentheses right here. And this is what's called typecasting, and this is primitive typecasting to be specific. So what this says, is says we're going to take the result of x times y, and it's enclosed in these parentheses, which will be 2.7, right? And then we're going to force it. We're going to take this value and just squish it into i result. Now, int cannot hold. Int is a, you know, a, you can basically only have whole numbers in int there, you know, and negative numbers too as well. But um, you cannot have decimal fractional numbers in the int data type. So let's go ahead and save this and compile it and check it out and see what happens. Java C, and I'm going to type F and then hit tab for the, that. And we'll go ahead and compile that file. I'm going to type in Java and then F and hit tab. And I'm going to take that dot class extension out because that's just the byte code that the Java C compiler produced. And we'll go ahead and hit enter on that. Okay. So we can see our I result is 2 and our D result is 2.7. So basically what happened here is it um, went ahead and just stripped off the 0.7 since it can't do it anyway. It doesn't round it up or anything like that. It just lops off any, any remaining because obviously you know, if it rounded it up, 2.7 would have rounded it up to 3. But our result is 2, not 3. So that's basically how it works. And one thing I'm going to show you here <coughs> is if we just take this typecasting out here, and we save this. I'm just hitting the up arrow on my keyboard to bring up that. Now we're going to get our error. Incompatible types. Possible lossy conversion from double to int. Right? And so that's basically what happens. Is it won't even let it compile if you try to, um, you know, perform operations, arithmetic operations on two different data types. Um, it won't let you do that if they're not compatible, per se. And int and double are not compatible because double can hold fractional values, int cannot. So by doing what's, what's called typecasting, putting this back in there, saving it, and now we can recompile this, and it's all happy. Um, and the advantage of that is, is that from a programming standpoint, we know we're going to lose um, some data. We, we lost that, that seven that seven tenths of, a, of the next number up and, and we're fine with that and we've told the compiler that we are fine with that and that's essentially what typecasting does. It says go ahead and compile this, make it happen, we know we're going to lose data. We're okay with that. So let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. just want to leave you with some final thoughts here. <clears throat> Java floating point literals really are pretty straightforward. If you plan on writing a program, you'll need some super precise fractional results like dot, and then you've got like 10, 10 plus numbers after that. Uh, then, it, then it's going to be worth your time to research what's called the IEEE -E -E 754 standard. The IEEE -E -E 754 standard governs the rules for binary floating point arithmetic. Uh, basically, it specifies number formats, operations, conversions, and exceptional conditions. And, so you can check that out. So if you're doing like super precision multiplication or division or any arithmetic operations where you need like really, really crazy precise results on that, then you'll definitely want to look into that. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.